Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. No! One of my viewers from Boston wanted me to talk about the rap and hip-hop music genre and how it has become so violent. Now, this viewer saw the death of rapper Slim 400, who died just a few hours after making a tribute to Young Dolph, and he believes that this rap culture has done nothing but bad for black men everywhere. However, that hasn't, wasn't the original case of rap music, and the great irony about today's violent rap music is that when the genre originally started, it was all about talking about non-violence, and the original creators of rap music were all about black empowerment. Now, back in the 1970s, when rap was originally created by groups like Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, and creators like Africa Bombada, it was all about trying to teach a message of positivity. Songs like The Message were all about trying to present a message of doing better, and the original intention of rap music was meant to try to educate and empower young brothers and sisters. Now, the original term rap was called rhythm and poetry, and it was a way for black people to show their intelligence because the whole intention of rap was to show that a person could go out here and create rhymes in order to make a poetic song flow. And it was all about how you use your your synonyms and your homonyms to make at, with, creatively with your words in order to make a song come together. That's what rap was originally all about. It was all about using the ability to create songs with phonics, with words, and all of that has been lost because many black Americans were caught up in seeking white validation because when your NWA came to the forefront in 1989 with that song F the Police, and that, song, and that record straight out of Compton, it completely changed the rap genre because after they came out with that song, we saw the entire rap genre become co-opted by whites who used it to be able to perpetuate old stereotypes about black people. But before those whites were able to get a hold of the rap genre, and it was controlled primarily by heterosexual black men. The rap genre was all about showing a positive image of black people, showing a positive message about the black community, and showing how skilled a rapper was with his words. So back in the 80s, from I say about 1977 to 1988, your rap was all about your ability to go out here and use your words, and that was the primary focus, and that was how you showed how skilled you were as a rapper. It was all about the substance of how you used your words phonetically, but all of that has gotten lost because your when your whites got a hold of the rap genre, they made it all about the flash of image. And when they made it about the flash of image, we stopped seeing what we saw from, I say, about 1986 to 1988, where we saw it was primarily about the phonetic use of wordplay. And the phonetic use of wordplay practically reached its peak as rappers like your Heavy D, your Cool G Rap, your Rock Him, and your Big Daddy Kane took the rap genre to another level with their lyricism and their ability to go out here and use words creatively. Those rappers were all about the wordplay, and lyricism was at its peak, but once your 
straight out of Compton came out, it started to stop being about the substance of the ability to use words, and it became all about the flash of image, and that flash of image of seeing these so-called gangster rappers, this is what really started to lead to the, what I start to say, the decline of the rap music genre. And the reason why I say it was the start of the decline of the rap music genre is because the original mission of rap music was winding up getting lost, and we were also starting to see the loss of all of the diversity that we used to see when heterosexual black men control the rap genre. When heterosexual black men control the rap genre, we saw many different rappers with many different styles of wordplay, and we also saw rappers rapping about multiple different topics from your teenage love, like Slick Rick did in a classic song, to rappers rapping with comedy like the Fat Boys and Kid and Play, to really hard skilled lyricists like your um, Cool G Rap or your Rock Him, to your combat to, to your other types of rappers like your Afrocentric rappers, um, like the X Clan. They came out in the '90s, but they were all about diversity, and you got to see a larger picture of the black community. But once your NWA came along and whites started to co-opt the rap game. That's when rap stopped being fun. That's when rap stopped being diverse. And that's when we got a tunnel to put on the entire genre of rap that has everybody thinking that they're a gangster and having everybody think they're a thug. And that's all to sate the people, white people, who want to see a certain type of image and a certain kind of story and a certain kind of narrative come out of black music and that narrative falls right in line with the narratives they wanted to put on TV shows like Good Times and Different Strokes where they show you these poor black people and that's, that's the kind of stuff they want to put out here because they want to program the idea in people's minds that all black people are poor, all black people struggle, and all black people need to use violence in order to survive. But the irony is, is that when we had rap originally come out, it was showing that poor black people, were, were, while they had their struggles, they still were not thinking about doing anything violent to their fellow brothers and sisters out here. No, when you had the original rap controlled by heterosexual black men, you had black men who were teaching love to each other, teaching how to work with each other, teaching how to conflict resolve, because when guys had a rap battle, they would use their words to go at each other, like in the classic LA, LL Cool J and Cannabis Beef, or the LL Cool J and Cool Mo D Beef. It would all be about how you would use your rhymes, and we, once you used your rhymes, and you had your battle, it was never personal. Two guys would let, let, their, let their skills be shown, and if one guy lost a rap battle, then it was something that they shook hands on and moved on. So old school rappers were all about their lyrics and their words, and it was never personal to the point where a guy was out here talking about he was gonna have a beef to the point where he was gonna go out here and get a gun because those two guys knew that it was all about your words and it and the words were not meant to hurt. It was all about showing your skill set on the mic and that's that's been lost because your whites, once they got a hold of the rap game, they turned it back into all of those old racist stereotypes that take us all the way, excuse me, back to the days of the antebellum self because your whites, the only type of black people they want to see are black people being criminals, black people being violent, and that's why we see this all the time in today's rap and hip hop, and that's why we have all of these violent rap beefs, because your blacks, a lot of black rappers, they buy into the whole gangster rap genre, but the gangster rap genre was not anything of our creation. No, the gangster rap genre was originally created by white producers 
and those white producers wanted to co-opt rap music to undermine black empowerment and the messages of black empowerment in rap music. That is what the they that's why they created gangster rap and that's why they created these characters like your NWA and your Tupac's and many of your thug rappers and the whole thug culture. It was all about taking black people off the road of empowerment that was laid by rappers like the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and rappers like Kool Mo D and others and taking us off the road of empowerment where Bill Cosby was laying down the blocks, getting black people focused on going out here and building black owned businesses and this whole gangster rap thing was about sabotaging one of the most profitable black owned businesses and that is the whole rap music genre because the goal of that whole gangster rap was about taking the control over a and powerful black owned business and putting it in the hands of whites and once it got in the hands of whites what happened was all of that message of empowerment all of that diversity showing you all of the aspects of black life all of that was completely lost in, in just a generation and it was just sad to watch all of this transpire as I was growing up because as I was growing up I remember watching all of that inspiring and uplifting music from rappers like the Fat Boys and many others and I remember what, what listening to this music and again it was very positive and uplifting and they took away all of that message of hope out of the music all because your whites wanted to see black men being repackaged black brutes and they wanted to see that street life that makes whites feel comfortable in their smooth world and it upset them to see that you would see a black man like a rock him or a cool G rap expressing intelligence in their lyrics or watching a guy like Big Daddy Kane being as smooth with his wordplay. That's what they did not want to see, the intelligence that was coming up and from the, I say about the 87 to about 89 coming up. And they did not like seeing all of these different rappers showing how they all had different messages in their rhythm and poetry. And they did not like the idea of all of the diversity that was being presented in the music. But the rap game was never originally, again, about this ghetto hood rat culture and portraying a black man as a thug. No, the original intention of rap was to show how intelligent black men could be and how they had a, a skill with their words. It wasn't about showing the worst aspects of the black community. No, it was always about showing the best. Unfortunately, once your whites got a hold of the rap genre through people like your Ice Cube and your many of your NWA members, and they got a hold of it and hijacked it, it became all about drug dealing, all about crime, and it all became about violence. But if you go back to Cool G Rap's 89 song, Road to the Riches, it was all about teaching against getting into the drug game, but then later on it became all about the drug game, all about crime, because that's all whites want to see black people do, and they only want to see the most negative images and negative messages, and sadly, because many children don't have fathers in their lives to tell them about how Madison Avenue and Hollywood work to create images and narratives about the black community, they wind up getting caught up in this whole street life and all of this beef stuff and they they get into it not understanding what originally what a rap beef was a rap beef again was all about your lyrics and your wordplay and it's about the guy with the most skills winning the rap battle and after you won the rap battle you shook hands with the guy who you had the beef with and you called it a day it was not about pulling out guns and shooting people or going out here and fighting people and when you look at old school beefs it was again about that skill on that mic and doing it freestyle which is when you're just doing it without writing anything down it's just you coming straight out of your mouth and all of that was lost because Madison Avenue and Hollywood 
created this repackaged thug, which is basically a black brute, and they put him out as the face of rap music with his sagging pants and his profane mouth, but that wasn't what rap was all about, and that's how your rap wound up becoming a complete mess as I see it, because rap, again, originally was never about promoting violence, it was all about promoting black love, it was all about promoting black empowerment, and it was all about promoting black pride, but what we see with rap today is what happens when whites get a hold of black music, and when they get a hold of black music, they change the message of that music, and they change the message of that music to fit their narrative, because what they want to do is undermine black empowerment. They want to get kids programmed to believe that the black world is all about violence and crime, and they want to get black kids on a road to the prison pipeline. That's what they're trying to do with this modern rap, and sadly, they are succeeding because many young kids don't have a father in their life or people who grew up with the original rap game or listen to original old school rap music to explain to them what this music was originally about and with these whites controlling the music right now they won't let the messages come out and again that's a great irony because when rap was positive back in the late 70s and 80s many of these same record companies did not want to distribute rap records and when rap was positive, they did not want to promote rap music, but when it became about violence and crime, these same record companies had no problem distributing N.W.A., they had no problem distributing Tupac, they had no problem distributing Thug Life and Thug Culture nationally as the main culture to black people. But when we controlled rap music and we wanted to create positive messages, Many of those in Hollywood and Madison Avenue in the record industry wanted nothing to do with our music. And again, that really shows how these people really think of black people. And sadly, because we don't have a lot of black people to think critically about the rap music genre or go back and research its history, what happens is we have an entire generation of young people thinking that rap is about this whole flash of bling and flash of being a thug and sagging pants and all of the core elements that make rap and hip-hop rap and hip-hop have become completely lost to an entire generation which is all about promoting white supremacy through a genre of music that was all about black empowerment and that is one of the saddest things about seeing today's rap music is that we see how that genre of music has become co-opted, taken off message, and we have guys out here thinking about not only doing violence, but we now have people talking about how they're effeminizing themselves, and like your little Nas X, and further compromising the genre. And this genre of music, sadly, has become a mockery of itself. And if you guys just go to YouTube and listen to some of the old school tracks, you will see the roots of this music, you'll see the roots of the message, and you'll see how far it has fallen because the rap music I grew up with was nothing like this. No, today's rap music, it just shows how white supremacy has compromised the entire rap genre and how many of your modern day rappers are minstrels, and sadly many of these minstrels are tapping, tap dancing their way to death, sadly like your Slim 400s and your um, young Dolphs, many of these guys, they're walking down a road that's going to lead to their death because they don't, they have not done their research on the history and culture of rap music and see that they're just completely off the road that many men like your Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five established almost 40 years ago. Now, this video was requested by a viewer, and if you want to request a video, you can send a donation to the Cash App, and if I know something about that subject, I will make that video for you. And if you want to pick up some of my positive, uplifting black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the ISIS series, the e Steam series, the John Hay series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and the Thetas and a Recipe for Success, 
You can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Taking Care of Business. The man who rules the world breaks in a brand new partner to help him take care of business in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Taking Care of Business at paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere.